once he was arrested, he was like a whip puppy, and he, uh, according to what they told me, he readily told them everything about what happened and how it happened. And he was just a young kid. He was only, I think, six, 15, 16 years old. Police mentality is when, once you hone in on a suspect, uh, you do all you can to bring that to uh, to court and to for the conviction. And sometimes we take shortcuts uh, in order to convict someone, and sometimes we just do things that are just right down dishonest. And I think that uh, once they uh, they honed in on David and uh, and Edward, that they just carried through and uh, and did it that way. After changing his story several times, Duane finally told the police it was Rice and Poindexter who'd made the bomb. He claimed the bomb had been made in David Rice's kitchen after Poindexter had brought a box of dynamite up from the basement. Duane also claimed Ed Poindexter told him to plant the bomb at an empty house in North Omaha. He went on to say, Poindexter gave him instructions to call the police to the house by dialing the emergency number from a payphone. I did not make that bomb. I didn't conspire with anybody to make it. I didn't put Dwayne Peak up to delivering it or having anything to do with it. In fact, the only thing that I said to, to Dwayne uh, during that period was go away, you suspended, grow up, because he was displaying some very bizarre behavior at that time. Uh, I had absolutely nothing to do with him making that bomb. I don't know if I would have had whatever it takes uh, to do that, because I had never really seriously hurt anybody that I know about, you know? And to take the step of killing somebody, uh, I don't know if I'd have been prepared to do that. On the basis of Duane's evidence, the police decided to charge Rice and Poindexter with the bombing. Many months later, in a wave of publicity, the murder trial was held. According to prosecuting attorney Sam Cooper, Duane Peake was the key to the prosecution case. The physical evidence, the, the dynamite, uh, that's all we would have had, I think, without Duane Peake. And I suspect it would have been questionable whether you could have filed anything. It's pretty clear that absent the testimony of Dwayne Peak, it would have been a weak circumstantial case of murder. I mean, he was critical to the case. Dwayne Peak's appearance in court as a witness was eagerly awaited. His was the only evidence which directly linked Rice and Poindexter to the bombing. When Dwayne Peak walked into the courtroom, that morning, uh, he appeared to be like any normal uh, young teenage uh, black person who uh, looked confident, uh, smiled, and recognized individuals uh, in the courtroom. Dwayne Peake was called to the stand as a witness for the prosecution. His testimony stunned the court. But when he testified in the morning, uh, he denied any involvement on my part or Ed uh, regarding the whole question of, of talking about a bombing or, or, or constructing a bomb or any of this. And um, I guess my reaction was, damn, this little dude is stronger than I could have guessed because I, I know they done some things to him or said some things to him that would scare the hell out of him. But somehow, he's not going along with the program. With those uh, shocking disclosures, shocking to the prosecution, the proceedings ended. Uh, at the request of the prosecutor who asked that the preliminary hearing be continued to the afternoon. Afternoon proceedings occurred, Dwayne Peake comes in wearing sunglasses, looking visibly shaken, changed. I asked Dwayne Peake to take off his sunglasses. His face around the eyes was swollen. It looked discolored to me. His eyes were red. It was clear he had been crying. And my impression at the time was that he had been struck physically, and that's what caused the discoloration and the marks around his eyes. When he took the glasses off, people in the courtroom let out an audible gasp. 
Dwayne Christopher Peak had been worked on, really worked on, between the morning session and the afternoon session. It was frightening to see what happened to that young man. If it were any other set of circumstances, were he accusing some white person of an offense and changed his story as many times and as many ways as he did, his testimony would have been considered so lacking in credibility that it would not have been used for any purpose whatsoever. But because there were certain words they wanted to come out of his mouth to implicate these black men, they could change it, orchestrate it, until they got those words from him. And once the words came from him that they wanted, his mouth became a prayer book. After Duane's changed testimony, the court session ended. That night, he wrote a letter home. They had me in court today. I guess you already know that by now. The Lord knows I tried, but something happened which forced me to realize that I had no alternative but to say what I said. Mama, I'm going through hell. I don't know what to do or how to do it or what to say or how to say it. I can't find the words to say to the people, I'm sorry. Most likely they'll probably prefer that I just die. I don't think I'll mind that at all. With love always, Dwayne C.P. The trial continued with the introduction of forensic evidence. After their arrest, Rice and Poindexter's hands had been tested for traces of explosives. These tests were negative. However, the prosecution's forensic expert claimed that dust particles in their clothes had tested positive for the presence of dynamite. But on cross-examination, he admitted that the tests carried out might not have been exclusively for dynamite. In fact, they could have registered positive from a range of other substances. To lend weight to his case, the prosecutor claimed that Ed Poindexter was an explosives expert who'd served in Vietnam. This was untrue. I was, I was a medical aid man most of that time, and then I was a mechanic. You know, no experience with explosives. You know, that was just, again, you know, uh, the press is um, uh, uh, in the FBI and the police department working in concert. That was their way of, of uh, making me look as, a, as, a, as bad as possible, you know. This guy must have done such a thing, because look at him, you know. He looks like Milton. He's big, uh, burly, black. He got a beard where it shades, you know. He's, he's, he's a Vietnam veteran. He must have done it. Look at him, you know. And he talks mean. You know, those are the, the images they put in people's minds, and uh, it worked. After all the evidence had been heard, Ed Poindexter and David Rice were found guilty. Well, of course, uh, police officers in that situation are always going to think about the death penalty. Uh, at that time, that was not possible in Nebraska. The maximum sentence available was, was life, is, which, uh, is what uh, Rice and Poindexter both received. I was expecting it, but then, you know, there's no way you can pray com can, can prepare yourself emotionally for something like that, you know. Um, I was numb uh, for about an hour, and then after that, uh, anger set in and, and uh, resentment. 